Okay, so here we are. We're just going to have a, a, a rough and ready, and I mean a very rough and ready, uh, examination of the dynamic range of the Canon 5D Mark IV. Okay, so we've got uh, this bracketed sequence of shots running all the way from 1 250th of a second, which was the exposure for the sky, and uh, all the way to 4 seconds, which was the spot metered exposure for the darkest shadows. Okay, and look at all that nice shadow detail in there. Ooh, isn't that nice? Okay, so if we come back to the middle exposure of the sequence, an eighth of a second at f8, 100 ISO, yeah, um, it's not looking too bad, or is it? Um, there's a telegraph wire across here, a telephone wire across here, and we can't see it. So if we drag the exposure down, um, if we go in and have a look, we can see we've, we're still actually losing this telegraph wire and we've got vast rafts or vast tracts of highlight areas in the sky that are totally lost. So basically, this shot is a complete not a waste of time for trying to um, examine the dynamic range of the actual sensor itself and see how much detail we've captured in both highlights and shadows. So if we come down a stop and uh, we go to a 15th of a second at f8, yeah, the sky is still looking extremely bright. But if we grab the exposure slider, now we can see that we've captured all the detail in the sky. There are no blown highlights on this sensor. This sensor has not overloaded itself. The AD converter has done a relatively good job and it's kept all the detail in the sky. Now, before we go any further, I know some people are going to watch this video and they're going to go, Oh, he's not doing it properly because he's doing it in Lightroom. He's using Lightroom stops. No, no, no. Yeah, tough. I am doing it in Lightroom. I'm using the Lightroom Develop Modules um, EV Exposure Control. Okay, now, yeah, we're not doing it in camera. Because um, we've already done it down here. Um, what we are doing is we're using, as I say, the Lightroom EV exposure control or EV stop exposure control. And to be quite honest, it, it does the job that we're asking, for, asking it to do here. So that's just the way I do these rough and ready tests. They're very, very quick to do. We don't have to do anything scientific or mathematical and uh, we certainly don't have to uh, try and scale it to a 13 by 19 inch print huh. right okay so exposure wise on this 1 15th of a second exposure we've actually got all the detail in the sky what about the shadows let's take the exposure the other way to plus five and let's go and have a look at this shadow area yeah it's captured a heck of a lot of detail. Yes, it's a little bit noisy. That's because we've boosted um, the exposure that much that we've lifted the noise floor. Um, that's basically because we shot this on an overcast day and the signal to noise ratio is not what it could be. Uh, we could have shot it in brighter conditions. But then again, in brighter conditions, we get excess contrast, which makes your shadows go even darker. So, doing uh, testing dynamic range is simple if you do it this way. It's not exactly the most accurate way, but it gives you a really good ballpark figure. You're never more than about half a stop out if you do it this way. So, basically, we've captured virtually all the shadow detail I mean god if we go in there we can virtually see right behind the tire just in that little area there yes there's a bit of noise in there yes there's a bit of colour noise bit of luminance noise but we're not really concerned that detail has been captured by the sensor so we could say that we've actually got a dynamic range of minus 5 to plus 5 stops yes we can now then the thing is can we wring any more out of it because if i just put that back where it was 
if we now come to this next darkest exposure, which is the evaluative metered uh, one thirtieth of a second, so basically this is what the camera's light meter deemed as correct exposure. Um, as soon as we got all the detail in the sky in the previous um, 15th of a second shot, it's a given that we've kept the dynamic range um, going in the highlights, so we will have caught all the detail in the sky, but what about the shadow detail? Okay, so let's bang it all the way up and let's go and have a look. And you can start to see that we've, we're beginning to lose the detail. Uh, not so much that it's being obscured by noise, but we are beginning to lose actual physical definition. So, in a way, we've got 10 stops here, and if we could pull all the detail back out in uh, this uh, 30th of a second shot, that could ostensibly be taken as adding another stop to the potential dynamic range. Um, but we're not, we can't, because we are losing the detail here um, through, yeah, basically, we haven't captured it on the sensor. It sort of captured it. It sort of captured it. So what I like to do, this is just the way my head works, and it's the way I suggest you work as well, um, because you never want to be too precise and start worrying over precise, precise dynamic range values. Um, we could say we've got an extra half a stop, potentially. I don't think it's quite half a stop. So we've got somewhere between 10 and 10 and a half stops of dynamic range available to us on this sensor today. <laughs> well, not today, it was yesterday actually. Um, but when we shot this, yeah, it was overcast, let's put it like that. Um, as I said before, we could have shot it on a, a, a different day under different conditions when we got more photons kicking about. And the other thing is that we could possibly have used a somewhat better piece of glass. And uh, this was shot with the 1635 Mark III. Um, we could have used a lens with um, a higher transmission value, in other words, it lets more photons through, and we could have used a lens with better micro contrast. Um, that means it's defining areas of near identical tone, um, whereas lenses with less micro contrast tend to lump areas of similar tone together. And obviously, the lower the micro contrast, the more it does that so you have a tendency to lose detail or tonal detail at least but anyway i'm sort of wobbling on a little bit i would say that judging by these results the 5d mark 4 sensor has got a dynamic range somewhere between 10 and 10 and a half stops there you go simple easy wasn't it